Hi. It looks like it's uh, one fifty-five or five minutes before the hour, wherever you are. So it's time to start. <clears throat> I'm Andrew Wetmore, and this is Hello Royale, a welcome or a uh, a uh, quick tour from pretty high up in the air of Royale, what it is, what it does for you, or what it could. Now I've very carefully minimized the the browser, the, the uh, presentation that I'm running off, so I had to find it again. So I've, uh, I'm an Apache Royal committer, and my main focus is on documentation because I came very late to the software world. That said, I spent 15 years developing software and often using Flex as the front end. So it's uh, I'm not the smartest guy about uh, Royale, but I, it's my favorite um, software. I also work with the Apache infrastructure team. By the way, if you're looking at me and the presentation on your screen, if you double click the presentation, it gets larger or as large as it can get. So Apache Royale, it's a software development kit. It lets you develop data-driven applications. You can use it, of course, to make a um, business card uh, website that just sits there, but it's great. You need to draw information in, process it, and hand it out again, drawing it in from data sources around the world or from some user who's who's working with the with the tool right at that moment. Second great strength of it, you build Apache Royale on one code base, and then you can export it, and you can run it on any browser that uses JavaScript. You can run it on the desktop using the Adobe Air runtime or something like that. Who knows what'll come next? Or on a mobile device, if you um, create a project that you can export for use with Apache Cordova or, or something like that. It's set up so we can extend the SDK so it will, so you can compile for other technologies like WebAssembly, native iOS uh, applications, or an Android one, or other new technologies that are going to appear. Eventually, Flash will, uh, fl I'm sorry, eventually JavaScript will go away as Flash went away. And when that does, Apache Royale can pivot to using a different technology to continue to compile and release. We started off as a Macromedia project, as so many good things did. Then in 2005, Adobe purchased Macromedia and Flex became Adobe Flex. From then until about 2011, that was great time for Flex users. The Flash engine was everywhere. The Flash tool was there and it was assumed to be where the cool stuff was. So Adobe Flex made it really easy to build an application and compile it, deploy it on anywhere where there was Flash. And then came 2011 and we learned that Flash would be coming to an end for various reasons. Flex technology to the Apache Software Foundation and a volunteer community since then has been working to improve it and extend it. And then a couple of years ago, the community came to a conclusion that should, there should really be a focus since Flash was really, really, really going away to be able to build applications using all the skills and the tools that Flex had brought this far, compile essentially to JavaScript so that the resulting output could run in any, any modern browser. And that's the main focus of Apache Royale is making it possible for you to build something that anybody can work with who's using a modern tool. 
the bases for Apache Rail are they're really two languages Rail uses. MXML is a declarative language that defines and organizes your user interface and makes possible a lot of cool Royal features. ActionScript is a, uh, uh, a tool for, for data manipulation and graphics and functions that support the front end. It's very like JavaScript, they're cousins, but it, it focuses on um, or it gives a lot of play for components and uh, uh, makes possible the sort of things that we were have been doing in in uh, Flex. The presumption always was that that uh, ActionScript would uh, would compile to to JavaScript. Another cool tool we have is ActionScript message format. This is an amazing utility for getting and sending data, whether to a remote source or to local storage. It's uh, powerful and fast, and again, makes a lot of things possible that would be hard to do otherwise in Royale, in a Royale application. We have a wide range of frameworks that you can add in to your Royale application uh, to make your development process simpler. I'm calling out Crux there because it provides those cool functions like inversion of control and dependency injection, which you may be familiar with from other uh, uh, platforms. The main concepts that that really I've got to say at this point, I'm 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 in love with with Royale. So I'm speaking as a fan. Uh, one of the main concepts that I find important and differentiates from a lot of other languages is that there is a concentration in Royale on object-oriented uh, programming. So I have a an application I built that helps an organization like a theater if they're running a competition for plays and they people are going to submit plays to them. And you can see immediately there would be several steps in that whole process. There's the submission process, the evaluation process, and if the theater likes the play, what they're going to do with it, the production process. If you put all the stuff having to do with submitting a manuscript into one uh, collection of files or even just one file and make that a module, you can then incorporate that into the main application without worrying that you're going to bother the code that uh, covers evaluating the manuscript or producing the play if it's accepted. So modular construction means it's easier to, to build your code in bits or for a team to work on the code, working on different sections without uh, crashing into each other. And it also... Um, uh, makes it easier to maintain, but it also makes it faster to uh, to compile, faster to display, as I'll show in a moment. Um, the other piece, I, I sort of strayed from OOP to modular design, but the other piece is we have in that uh, application where you're submitting a play for possible production, you have an object who is the author, and you have another object that is the play, the manuscript. Separating those out as objects means I can put in the play object all the things it has, its name, its length, its cast list, and so on, and all the things, if, if in my application, if it could do anything, the things it could do. The author object has his name con or their name, contact information, and the various things they can do, like submit or uh, respond. Connected to this concept is the uh, principle of strict, strictly typed properties in Royale. And that means if you create a, uh, a property and say when you create it that it's going to accept a text string, well then that's what it's going to accept from then on. You can't 
later assign it a, a numeric value or or an array or something. Um, and if you try to, and then at compile time, you'll get an error, and you'll get the error before your end users see it. Some other, lots of other languages um, don't have strictly typed properties, and therefore you can assign what you want at any given time to uh, a, a property. So in a sense, your mileage may vary. It's what you're more comfortable with. Me, I'm comfortable with uh, strictly typed properties because it keeps me ma from making too many obvious mistakes. One of the other great big concepts that is uh, uh, differentiates Royale from Flex before it is pay as you go or pay G. Basically, let's say you had an application that had a hundred text entry fields. And each of those text entry fields inherited all its properties from the template, the master text entry uh, property. Okay, that's reasonable. That's inheritance. But what if in your application, there's only two of those text entry field instances that have to accept only numbers? Well, if you were in a flex application, no problem. Every single one of those text entry fields would have all the code necessary to do everything that field, that property could possibly do anywhere, including restricting its input to numbers. But the downside is then you have a hundred instances of all that code and 98 of them, 498 of them, the bit about numbers is never gonna come into play. So we do rather less inheritance in Royale and more composition, and that is, the keeping with the text input uh, field, the basic text input field is quite skinny. It's got just the very least code possible to accept, let it accept text. If you want to make it do other things, to be disabled or to act like a password input uh, uh, field, or in this case, to only accept numbers, you add functionality by adding what are called beads. The, the uh, file itself the, uh, is, is the strand. And onto that, in this image, you drop onto a, a bead or two beads or multiple beads to give it extra abilities. In this case on the screen, we've given it a bead that lets a prompt appear that says only numbers if, if the... Uh, user tries to put in letters or something else. And we add a bead that restricts the pattern, that restricts what can be input to numbers. You can have tons of beads attached to a specific instance of any of the components that go in your application. It depends what that particular instance of the component needs, what you add. Here's some other cool features. And again, I say this as a fan of Flex and Royale and the things that have helped me out and saved my bacon in several projects over time. Data binding is cool. <clears throat> uh, you have code, you have, you have properties here with values, a property with a value. You have a display on your user interface <clears throat> and you can bind those two together. So if the data changes, the display changes immediately. You can also make it so if the display changes, the data in your data source changes. I think that's super. Event bubbling. Now, we have, if we have our code broken up into modules, we want to make sure that when an event happens and sets off an alert that an event has happened, the event watcher that's looking for that event or waiting for that event gets it. So the event will look around in the module where it is, where it was generated, can't find it, move up, move up, move up in the code until it finds the event listener that it matches it will, and it tells it to do whatever the thing is that the event listener is supposed to do. Third cool thing we have in Royale is component sets. You don't start from just nothing. There are whole sets of components. And by that, I mean text entry fields, buttons, uh, labels, 
uh, containers, uh, number steppers, all sorts of things that are already formatted so that you can choose to take a very lightweight component set and very quickly build a proof of content set of your application. Or you can choose a richer component set and get well on your way to not only having the thing do what it needs to do, but do it in an attractive way. On Thursday, uh, Carlos Rivera is presenting on the Apache Jewel component set to show what it has and what it does and why. The three more features that I want to show you that I think are super cool. View states. Basically, this is a way of simplifying the refreshing of the user interface as things change in the application. Let's say you have a login screen. So you're going to have a screen where you log in, and then something is going to be different once you are logged in on that screen. So you create two, one called login and one called logged in. And then in your display uh, code, a little bit further down, you tell each element of the display in what in which state it's going to appear and then you just have to change the state of the of your application and if you change if you, if you make the state log in then there's going to be the name and password field appearing and a button and if you change the state to logged in those things just go away and there's a welcome message or whatever your application has at that point. It's very efficient. It, uh, it's saved me having to think so many times about how am I going to get things to go away and the right things to go away as we move from uh, step to step in a user process. Item renderers, I think, um, very pleasing to me anyhow. You have a data source, um, an array with uh, in each row in the array has a, a name and a type and an icon indication and maybe other properties. And you can indicate which properties you want to use and then set up a template, an item renderer that grabs those properties and displays them where you want this thing to be, in this case, in a list. So you can make a pretty list very quickly and dynamically because as the data source changes, that list will get longer or shorter and still with the appropriate in, uh, images related to the appropriate uh, names. We have a really nice set of charts in, uh, in Royale, but they aren't, you know, people, there are other and sometimes better charts out there in the world. One excellent set of charts is eCharts. It's, an, it's now a project incubating at, at the Apache Software Foundation. It uses a JSON format, hierarchical format, to declare components and styles and data and what interactions you can use with the chart. And it takes almost no time to add an eChart from the eCharts external library into a Royale app. There are two ways. You can add a compiler directive or you can use the external interface function, which is Royale's version of the old Flash external interface function. And that means very quickly you can put in a piece of a, a chart that takes your data and displays it in what we hope the uh, users will find a compelling and pleasing way. But this also points to the fact that you can use any JavaScript library that's out there. We can you can incorporate from the world of JavaScript JavaScript riches into your Apache Royale application, then compile the whole thing together and use it out securely and uh, efficiently. The first target for Royale was and is flex people who are looking at applications and assets and piles of knowledge that are threatened with coming to an end with the end of Flash. And they're all, they have two choices. They can move to some other technology, which may mean learning another language. And then if they want to use the same application, 
rebuilding it in that new language. Or they can migrate to Royale. They migrate that application to Royale. The differences between working in Flex and working in Royale are relatively small and the, and the curve to learn them is pretty gradual. A lot of what you already have in your application is just gonna work. Almost all the action script, for instance, is just gonna work. The skills that you have are just gonna work. If you go with the process of Pago, of um, making lean components, you'll end up, rather than have every text entry field having all the possible actions of a text entry field and every other app, uh, component having all the possible functions for that component, if you move from that to uh, using the lean a uh, Royale version of each uh, uh, component plus strands and beads for what you need in each specific instance, you'll get a much smaller uh, footprint for your compiled application. And much faster display. On Wednesday, Alina Kazai is presenting how she and her team, a team of primarily of two people, herself and one other person, moved a major application from Flex to Royale. I, I found it really interesting, and I know you will also, especially if you're in that boat where you're looking at the end of the year coming up and, there, and the end of Flash. But it's for everyone else too. If you're comfortable with strongly typed properties, if you want to investigate op uh, object-oriented programming, if you think that might be a way to make bite-sized all the things you have to do in building an app. If you want to explore good frameworks and interesting component sets, and you like the option of incorporating a lot of stuff from the existing uh, JavaScript universe, then Royale is for you. And Carlos Rivera, again, on Wednesday, he's gonna be uh, presenting how to start from a blank file. And, uh, his goal is to build a uh, to-do list application, which is uh, uh, a pretty good benchmark for how an app, how a uh, SDK works, whether you can put, a, put together an application like that efficiently and usefully. Here's a comparison of the same code structure running in Royale versus React JS or the similar code structure. React is a is a pretty well known um, framework for in JavaScript, and Royale is just a ton faster. This is just one data point. I had an, heard another data point yesterday on the user's email list for Royale. Someone saying he started to work with Royale. He wasn't too sure. Trying to migrate his desktop app. He's got it running. He's got all the uh, dashboards and everything going. He's got the code flowing. And he's also found he had a big problem in, in the Flex version in that he had a very large database call for a particular display. And it was taking up to 10 seconds in Flex for the page to resolve the data to be available. And he's finding in Royale that it's taking one second. Again, there's just a single data point. And uh, but it matches what we're hearing from all over that the principle of Pago and um, uh, keeping a small footprint is making it possible to create applications that are both more sturdy than those from other frameworks, but are faster and uh, as reliable as anybody could want. So to me, my love affair with Flex once and then deploy this stuff anywhere, knowing that I can code for the future, that we can extend to other uh, platforms. And related to that, that now Royale is open source, so there will not be a flash extinction event ahead of us, that the complete platform and our reason for being as Royale people would go away. That's not gonna happen.
So that's most of everything that I was going to say. And oh, look, we have time in hand. So if anyone has uh, questions they want to type in, there's a chat screen, and I will try to um, I'll try to answer them. I should really go over to the next, uh, there, how about that? No, we, someone's asking, or uh, Varun Kumara is asking, do we have an ID, like the Flash Builder for Rael? We do not yet. Uh, we have internet uh, <laughs> integrated development environments like Moonshine that run uh, Rael, support Rael, but they do not have that wonderful tool where you could drag a text box over here and drag a button down there. That's how I learned uh, Flex. I'm, I'll be glad when we have it again, but we don't have it yet. Of course, I should say, best way to move us toward where we will have such a thing is for people who are curious or interested to come and get on the uh, uh, the users or the dev lists for Apache Royale and say, hey, we need an IDE. So uh, Daniel is asking, does Apache compete with technologies like Vue, React, and Angular? In the sense, it's a framework. Um, but because uh, Royale is based on ActionScript, which makes a lot of space and assumptions for making components of your of your code, which JavaScript doesn't really. Um, it has a slightly different attack. Um, that's a very good point. Jose says there, there are hundreds of examples in pages like Stack Overflow uh, for other technologies, but very few in Royale. That's true. We have, um, for all open source projects, we can only do what the team is available to do. And the more users, uh, the more users we have, who surface issues that need answers, the more we have answers we can post to a place like Stack Overflow. On our website, we have a very good collection of tutorial um, uh, lessons uh, from our blog on a wide range of things that introduces not only the specific topic, like how to do a view state, but the whole concept of, uh, of how to work with the Apache Royale code and also provides, of course, access to the example code. Some uh, Varun Kumar asks, do we have any more documentation and examples for Crux and real world AMF? If you go to our website, you should find material on Crux and AMF. And again, if you're if you're not uh, seeing it there, if that's the place to ask for it. Yes, as Carlos says, it's up to all of us to make Royale uh, bigger and to have more users and resources. One of the reasons we have so many, we are so well prepared for Flex users to migrate an application from Flex to Royale is that we've had people who've done it and contributed their knowledge and the code they had to write. In the same way, if someone needs, sees a need, oh, I need more animation support, it's partly up to me to do um, to provide uh, at least some guidance to some specific questions so the community 
can uh, make a response. Yeah, Carlos has pointed out that uh, uh, there's an example using Crux uh, on the website, and that uh, might give a lot of guidance or a, a lot of help in getting you started with Crux. As Carlos says, that example doesn't use AMF, but it, but and it does use HTTP, HTTPS, <laughs> HTTP services, but right up to there, it's exactly the same. And um, again, the nice thing is if you get stuck trying out that example, the community is able to help clarify. So there we're a little we have a little time in hand however I'm sure you may you may feel like uh getting yourself a uh a beverage or uh getting into the uh, corridor chats uh before the next session So Praveen asks is there a small sample demo project which has the conversion from Flex to Apache Royale in Git. And Carlos says, says yes. <laughs> oh, exactly. There is, um, and Carlos will be, uh, uh, um, as Carlos points out, there is the good old Flex tool called Tour de Flex that showed all the different uh, properties and controls in uh, Flex and how you could use them in a whole bunch of simple examples. And there is a an instance of that in the source code that you can compile and run and see that it converts into um, a Royale application. As Alina, Alina says, it's in the uh, SDK examples folder in the And the link is there in the chat screen. So if there are no more questions, we'll draw this to a close. Um, I do hope you follow the other three talks in our track that I mentioned. There's the one about starting from a blank file, build, even if you have no flex resources to start with. You can also uh, visit the one on migrating from a Flex app to a Royale app. And there's a third one on taking a tour of Tour de Jewel. The Jewel component set is the most elaborated and um, subtle of the component sets that Royale has. Support, uh, and if you have issues, the best way is to join the users at uh, Apache Royale web uh, email list. And um, there we are. There, Carlos had just posted the link to the mailing lists. And introduce yourself there. You can present a specific problem, a code snippet, or ask even a general question. And uh, the, I've found the team is remarkably responsive in terms of do it, responding quickly and to the point. Um, Carlos has also posted a link if you if you're talking from the point of view of a, a business that needs commercial support. 
Sudakara uh, asked about commercial support, and if you go to the link that Carlos just posted, you'll see some of what uh, we recommend. So as, Car as Carlos is pointing out, that that page that he's linked to lists people, um, uh, vendors, and and companies that can provide uh, commercial support to your migration project, and of course the Rail team itself can provide open source support. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for showing up. And you enjoy the rest of ApacheCon.